A renaissance man, as defined by Google, is a person with many talents or areas of knowledge. You may have clicked on this video expecting a video about the likes of Andrew Jackson, the first Democratic president, or the founder of the Democratic Party, Martin Van Buren. But today, we're actually going to talk about someone who does not get enough credit. His name is Jacob Ziegler. See, I told you you wouldn't know who we're talking about. But instead of focusing on the 19th century Democratic Party, instead, we're going to focus on the life of Jacob Ziegler and the many titles and accomplishments that he earned throughout his long life. Jacob was born in a small town whose name remains far more infamous than his own. This town is Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Gettysburg would become the site of one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War. But for now, it was just a sleepy little town in southern Pennsylvania. Our story starts here. On September 19, 1813, Jacob Ziegler is born to his mother, Elizabeth Ziegler, and his father, George Ziegler. His mother came to America from the German province of saxon anhalt when she was just a child. On his father's side, his roots in America would be far deeper than that of his mother's. Jacob's grandfather was named Frederick Emanuel Ziegler. He came from Germany to America and he participated in the Revolutionary War. He was just a private in the Revolutionary War, but his influence on American history does not end there because Frederick Emanuel Ziegler is a founding member of the borough of Gettysburg and of the county that it resides in, which is Adams County, named after the second president, John Adams. His son and Jacob's father would follow in Jacob's grandfather's footsteps. George would join the War of 1812 to fight the British. Throughout his deployment here in the title of Captain Ziegler, due to him participating in the War of 1812 and Jacob being born in 1813, George most likely missed out on the early portion of Jacob's life. George would remain a prominent figure in Gettysburg throughout Jacob's childhood. In 1820, he'd be named Deputy Marshal of Adams County, and in 1822, he earned the title of Major Ziegler of the Union Battalion of Adams County. This would make Jacob's grandfather and father some of the most prominent figures in early Gettysburg history. Jacob would be the second born of a total of 11 children. Jacob had one older sibling who did not make it past infancy. This would make Jacob the eldest of ten siblings. Jacob would receive the best kind of education that he could for his time and place. And shortly after finishing his education, his father would move his family to a farm about three miles outside the city of Gettysburg. Jacob would experience two main tragedies in his adolescent life, and those were the death of his brother, David, and the death of his sister, Hannah who both died at the age of three. 1831, it's the biggest year in Jacob Ziegler's life. And this is for one simple reason. September 13th of that year would mark Jacob Ziegler's 18th birthday and his official welcoming into adulthood. This would also be one of the most dramatic episodes in Jacob's life because a month before his 18th birthday in the month of August, Jacob decides to run away from home. But why did he suddenly just pack his bags and leave? Jacob probably got sick and tired of farm life and all the mundane chores that are associated with that kind of life. And he also probably had a strict and controlling father because he was a military man. He was the major of the Union Battalion. And with the birth of his brother in that same year, Jacob would have eight siblings. He'd have to look over as the oldest and most responsible of them all. So Jacob makes a hobo sack out of a handkerchief, grabs a dollar and 12 cents, and he hits the road, and he's going west, wherever the road will take him. I'm going to take this time now to quote Jacob Ziegler. When Jacob reached the gates of his family home, he turned around, and he sees his mother in the window. He states, quote, With tears in my eyes, I simply said to myself, Goodbye, dear mother and turned into the darkness to find my way the best that I could to Gettysburg. Jacob continues on the road for about a week when eventually he ends up in a small town in western Pennsylvania that's called Butler. Butler is a town situated about 45 miles north of the city of Pittsburgh. It would not take Jacob very long for him to become useful for the citizens of Butler. When, in 1831, about a month after he comes into the city, 
he meets a man named James McLaughlin, and James owns a local newspaper called The Repository, and he offers Jacob Ziegler an apprenticeship at The Repository. This apprenticeship would last a total of two years and six months, and during this time he was called the printer's devil. He was called the devil because he would have to do the hard labor that the master, James McLaughlin, would not have to do. The Repository was a democratic newspaper, and this is how Jacob first gets a taste of the Democratic Party that he becomes a part of. Jacob would complete his apprenticeship under McLaughlin, and he would go on to work for the Repository. Four years into Jacob living in Butler, the people take a liking to him enough to name him the clerk to the county commissioners, and this is a job that Jacob would do well in. The clerk was basically just the secretary to the county commissioners of Butler, which there were five of. So in this job, he would attend county meetings, although he would have no say in the meetings in a political manner, but he would act as a financial agent for the county, telling the other commissioners what they can and can't do with their financial resources that they have. He was named this at only 22 with no other political experience, but soon he would try to get that political experience because Jacob Ziegler was becoming a lawyer. He would start studying law in 1835 and finish a year later in 1836, officially becoming attorney at law. He studied at the Butler Bar Association. While he was studying law, he was also courting a local girl. This girl was named Sarah Brinker, and she was the daughter of one of the first pioneers of Butler, one of the first people to come to Butler. His name was Abraham Brinker. Jacob most definitely met this girl through his boss and former master, James McLaughlin. See, James was already the son-in-law of Abraham. He married one of his other daughters, Louisa, and he most likely introduced Jacob to Sarah and Abraham Brinker. The couple would marry on June 30th of 1835. Just a year after their marriage, the pair would have their first child, Amelia, in 1836. The word of Jacob's success must have gotten out to Gettysburg, because in 1838, Jacob's younger brother would move in with Jacob, and he would start to study law at the Butler Bar Association, just like Jacob did, and he would also take the clerk of county commissioner's office in 1840, the role that Jacob had previously filled in. This brother's name was George Walter Ziegler, named after their father, George. And George would continue to mirror Jacob in many ways throughout his life. But for now, he was living with Jacob, and they were up-and-coming politicians in the city of Butler. But the only reason that George would receive Jacob's role as the clerk of county commissioners is because in 1838, Jacob would be nominated as Prothean notary at a time whenever the governors of their state selected the Prothean notary. But while Jacob was Prothean notary, it was during his time in this role that the job switched from being chosen by the governors to being chosen by the people. But the people of Butler seemed happy with the choice that the governor had made, and they re-elected him into office. The year of 1838 would mark the birth of Jacob's firstborn son. His name would take the name of his brothers, George Walter Ziegler. For some reason, the people of Butler loved Jacob Ziegler. They could not get enough of him. So, in the year of 1838, the same year as the birth of his firstborn son, Jacob will become the Chief Burgess of Butler County, which is a role that is pretty much equivalent to that of a mayor. In the following year of 1839, Jacob would once again be the Chief Burgess of Butler. Fast forward two years to 1842, and Jacob Ziegler and James McLaughlin are finalizing their purchase of the repository and they are changing the name of this newspaper to the Butler Democratic Herald. Owning a newspaper and being a politician at this time would pay dividends because owning a newspaper would mean that you would get to promote your own ideas and get your name out there while also having people pay for that. It's a great political tool. This self-promotion would pay off in 1844 when Jacob would become the assistant clerk to the Pennsylvania State Senate. He did this at a time whenever James Buchanan was one of the two senators of Pennsylvania. It's very possible that James Buchanan and Jacob Ziegler crossed paths at some point in Harrisburg. Jacob may have ran away from his father, but that does not mean that he learned nothing from the man. Because in 1845, Jacob gathered enough funds 
and enough people to start his own militia group. They were called the DeKalb Greys. Jacob would use his own money and time to supply and drill these soldiers. Many now referred to him as Captain Ziegler. With his newly found money and respect, Jacob Ziegler would run for state representative in 1848. He would blaze through the competition of the Free Soil Party that was created earlier that year by Martin Van Buren. He would win this election and serve the people of Butler County as a state representative. This job would mean that Jacob would have to spend a lot of time in the Pennsylvania state capital of Harrisburg. So he sold his newspaper. After all, you have to be a local to report on local news. After his time as state representative was up, he did not run for re-election, and instead he became a clerk of the Pension Department of Pennsylvania. He only held this job for two months, however, because in 1849, a new president was elected, Zachary Taylor. And the most important thing about Zachary Taylor that we need to know is that he was a Whig and Jacob was a Democrat. So almost immediately as Zachary Taylor got elected, Jacob would lose his job to a Whig party member. It wasn't all bad, though, because now Jacob had a lot of free time on his hands. So he did what every wanderlust-filled person at that time did in America, and that was go to California, mine some gold, and come back filthy, stinking rich. Most people would call Jacob a 49er, but actually he'd be more considered a 50-er because he left in 1850 instead of when most people left in 1849. He left with his long-term friend and mentor, James McLaughlin. Together, the pair made it to El Dorado County. This county was home to Sutter's Mill, the place where the first large deposit of gold was found in California. The two brother-in-laws were living the dream, but this would not last long because soon, James McLaughlin would pass away in California. Imagine being in Jacob's shoes. You're thousands of miles away from home, and your best friend, mentor, former boss, business partner has just died. And now you're stuck in this place that's thousands of miles away from home with his body that you are now responsible for burying, not his wife or kids. At the top of the, his tombstone is a symbol, and this symbol is two men shaking hands. And I believe that this symbol represents Jacob's farewell to James. One last final handshake. He would end up staying in California for a total of 14 months, returning on February of 1851. There are absolutely no records to show if Jacob actually struck gold in California and was now rich beyond his dreams. But there is one shred of evidence that points to Jacob becoming more wealthy at this time. And this is whenever he repurchased his share of the Democratic Herald. And he didn't re just repurchase one share. He repurchased two shares, one of his former masters and his former share that he sold. The 1850s could be considered the best and worst times for Jacob. Because sometime in the mid-50s, his family that he deserted as a child decided to move to Butler. These family members would include his mother, Elizabeth, his sister, his brother, Andrew, that he left when he was only an infant, and his brother, William. William would soon get his own house. Andrew, whenever he moved to Butler, decided to become the apprentice at the Butler Democratic Herald to Jacob. His youngest sister would soon marry one of the more prominent members of Butler County. He belonged to a very wealthy family. These were the Meechlings, and more specifically, she married Simon Meechling, the son of someone who Jacob knew very well. He likely set this marriage up for his sister. Julia would not go to Simon's house alone, however, because with her, she brought her mother that they would take care of, and she would live in that home until she passed away. Now with his family's support, Jacob would run for the chief clerk of the Pennsylvania State House of Representatives. This would mean, once again, more time in Harrisburg and less time in Pennsylvania. So once again, Jacob would sell the Butler Democratic Herald. A chief clerk does many things for the House of Representatives, like record their history and announce messages. But one very important thing that the chief clerks are responsible for is the House Journal. And what this is is the rules for how you should conduct a session of the meeting of the house. 
Jacob, being the avid newspaper editor and writer that he was, decided to put his skills to use. He would work extensively on the house journal. Jacob, who bounced around from job to job, decided to stick with this one, and he was actually employed at this role for four years. But soon, with the election of the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, the Civil War would start. Jacob would join the political group known as the Northern Democrats, which was just a branch of the Democratic wing. Soon, a volunteer regiment from Butler would organize themselves at Harrisburg. One notable absentee from this group would be Jacob Ziegler, but the people of Butler County were determined to get Jacob there. So, in 1861, they elected him to be captain of their company. Jacob would have been honored to accept this role, but he could not. Now, more than ever, states needed competent statesmen. So, Jacob decided to use his brain instead of his brawn. So, in 1861, he became chief clerk again. But instead of the House of Representatives this time, he chose to become chief clerk of the Pennsylvania State Senate. Now that he had experience as both the chief clerk of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives and the chief clerk of Pennsylvania State Senate, he probably knew more laws in Harrisburg than even to some of the top lawyers. And he undoubtedly knew more about how to conduct a proper Senate meeting or House of Representatives session better than anybody else in Pennsylvania. So he did what many people who know more about something than the average person do, and that's make a YouTube video. Just kidding. He actually wrote a book. A manual for the government for the Senate and House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, or as many senators and politicians would call it, Ziegler's Manual. Andrew Ziegler, who now worked at the Butler Democratic Herald as a journeyman, decided to join the Civil War. So he joined the 103rd Regiment of Pennsylvania, and this regiment would be taken by George McClelland to the Peninsula Campaign, which would feature a Union defeat and some bloody battles, including the Siege of Yorktown and Williamsburg. In 1862, General Robert E. Lee would invade Maryland. This would cause Pennsylvania to institute an emergency militia in case of invasion. This militia would feature a few of Butler's citizens, but most notably it would feature Jacob's other brother, William Ziegler, who in 1861 was elected Chief Burgess of Butler, much like Jacob. The militia unit saw no combat and was retired about 20 days after it was assembled. 1862 would once again see the election of Jacob's brother, George Walter Ziegler, as a representative. The two brothers likely met at this time in Harrisburg. From humble beginnings in Butler County as Prothean Notary or Clerk to County Commissioner or Chief Burgess, the two were now experienced and respected Harrisburg politicians. July 1st, 1863 would mark the start of the bloodiest battle of the Civil War and the biggest battle on the North American continent. This battle would take place in the hometown of Jacob Ziegler. The Battle of Gettysburg had begun. Jacob still had family in Gettysburg, however. His first cousin, a man by the name of William T. Ziegler, was the owner of the property where the famous Pickett's Charge took place. His land would see the deaths of hundreds of men. 1865 would mark the year of the end of the Civil War, but it would also be the beginning of a new business venture for the always ambitious Jacob Ziegler. He would be one of the founders and the president of Butler Oil Company. The company was a bust, however, and failed to find enough oil to support their business venture. Two years later, in 1867, Jacob repurchases, for the third and final time, the Butler Democratic Herald. And this time, he purchased it with his son, Alfred G. Ziegler. One year later, a new oil company is founded in the city of Butler. This oil company would take the name of the former oil company's president. It would be called Jacob's Oil Company. And this company would far exceed its predecessor. It managed to find oil in Butler in just under a year at a place called Martinburg's Well. And it would be the spot of the first paying oil well in the city of Butler. The presidency of Ulysses S. Grant was shadowed by a common theme of scandal. One of these scandals took the name of the Credit Mobilier scandal. 
This scandal would include many, including future president, but now state representative, James Garfield, Vice President Shiler Koflax, and Vice President Henry Wilson. Jacob reveals in his autobiography that he is indeed the originator of this scandal, and that it's from his brain other people took money to line their own pockets while he took none. In 1878, the now elderly Jacob Ziegler would take back his position of Chief Burgess of Butler County, a position that he once held 40 years ago in 1838 and 1839. Jacob would run for election again in the following year, but this time not for Chief Burgess of Butler County. This time, Jacob wanted a more national role, and he decided that his best bet would be to run for the Sergeant at Arms of the Senate. For once in his life, Jacob would lose. And his reaction is quite hilarious. The St. Louis Global Democrat, which was a newspaper at the time, reported on Jacob losing this, and it goes as follows. Jake Ziegler, who was candidate for Sergeant-at-Arms of the Senate, came from his defeat spitting tobacco juice and using vigorous language. It's safe to say that he was not happy. This defeat would somewhat be made up in the following year, however. In 1880, the New York Herald, which is one of the biggest newspapers at this time, decides to feature Jacob Ziegler as one of the possible presidential candidates for the new upcoming election. This article also states that Jacob is the favorite of the Speaker of the House, Samuel Randall. Just one year after this, Jacob's wife, Sarah Ziegler, formerly Brinker, would pass away at the age of 69. To distract himself from this death, Jacob decided to do what he did best, and that was work. He got the office of the state representative once again for the year of 1872, at the age of 70 years old. 1872 would be the election year for another Ziegler, George Walter Ziegler. But not George Walter Ziegler as in Jacob's brother. George Walter Ziegler as in Jacob's firstborn son, who would run and be elected as Chief Burgess of Butler County. At this time, Jacob can be spotted on his son's council, and he would most likely prescribe some great advice to George because Jacob had been in that spot. Fast forward a few years in the years 1886, Jacob Ziegler is once again fumigated. This time, for the same reason last time, he lost the election for the sergeant-at-arms of the Senate. It's after this, at the age of 72, that Jacob decides to retire from his political life. He served his government in a variety of roles over a span of 17 years. In return, he does what he always does and gives back to his community. In 1886, he becomes the vice president and one of the founders of Butler's YMCA. At the age of 74 and in the year of 1888, Jacob Ziegler, at 10 a.m., passed away. Featured in his obituary are kind words from his fellow members of the Butler Bar Association, of which he is the oldest member of at 56 years of membership. It's in his obituary that his most famous nickname would be written down, and that is Uncle Jake. Everybody in Butler called him Uncle Jake because everyone felt a sense of familiarity with him and trust. Over his 32 years as an editor of the Butler Democratic Herald, he would issue 196 different copies of this newspaper. In his time on Earth, Jacob has been called many titles. Some of these include Son, Big Brother, Father, Honor, Prothan Notary, Chief Burgess, County Commissioner, Printer's Devil, Editor, Author, Captain, Assistant Clerk to the Pennsylvania Senate, Representative, 49er, Chief Clerk to both the Pennsylvania House of Representatives and the Pennsylvania Senate, President of Butler Oil Company, Founder of Jacobs Oil Company, Founding Member of Butler's First Bank, Founding Member of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, Founding Member of the Butler Mutual Insurance Company, and Vice President as well as Founder of Butler's YMCA. A Renaissance man, as defined by Google, is a person with many talents or areas of knowledge. Jacob Ziegler was one of the most renaissance of men in this 19th century America. He had his hands in a little bit of everything when it comes to American history.